بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم مائی ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس ہاؤ آئی یو آئی ہوپ یو آر انجوائنگ دی بیسٹ آف ویلف آئی ویلکم یو ان مائی کلاس دیٹ از انگلش فار گریٹ فور وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ یونٹ تھری اٹس ٹائٹل از مارکیٹس ان بگ سٹیز آف پاکستان ٹوڈے از لیکچر ون مائی ڈیئر فیلو ٹیچرس دس لیسن پلان پاور پوائنٹ پرزنٹیشن ورک شیٹ لنکس آر گیون یو میک کلک اٹ ڈاؤن لوڈ اٹ Follow it as it is or modified for your convenience. I'm going to deliver my lecture according to this lesson plan. Yes, my dear students. So under the title of grammar, we are going to learn about countable and uncountable nouns. And we'll cover page number 25 of your book. Before this, in English for grade 3, I have already taught you about countable and uncountable nouns. I hope you remember. If not, you may watch this video again. And today we are going to learn further. To identify countable and uncountable nouns, demonstrate use of some nouns from immediate and extended environment as countable and uncountable nouns. We learn to recognize and use full stop with some abbreviations, apostrophe with contractions and hyphen with common compound words. So our focus will be a pause trophy with contraction from this SLO for today's lecture. So these are our today's SLO. Let's start with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah mentions in Surah Al-Burj, Surah Al-Buruj, verse 1. By the sky containing great stars. Yes, my dear students, this small verse is telling us a lot. And what is that? Great stars. It means huge number of stars. And you tell me, can we count stars? No, we cannot. So anything which we cannot count is called uncountable. Okay, so now you tell me what are countable, what is a countable noun, and what do you know about uncountable nouns? I just gave you a clue, so pause the video, answer these questions to your teacher. Yes, my dear students, I hope you have answered. So I'm going to tell you again, everything around us that we can see, hold, touch, or feel has a name and that is called a noun. This noun may refer to a person, place, or thing. Now, this person, place, or thing, if it is countable, we, it is countable noun. And if it is uncountable, it is uncountable noun. And what does countable mean? Countable means to count in numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4. If you can count in numbers, it is countable. But you might must have observed there are few things we cannot count. So whatever we cannot count is uncountable now. It can be person, place, thing. The main thing is it's noun. Okay? It is noun. It can be living thing, non-living thing, personal place. So whenever you can count it, it's countable means you can count in numbers and if you cannot count in numbers it is uncountable okay so i'm going to give you a few example for example an apple so it's one i can count it even if it's two i can count it three four five six so apples we can count that's why it's countable now but if i talk about milk what does can we count milk no it is uncountable. So how do we talk about milk? It can be a bottle of milk, a liter of milk, six bottle of milk. So we talk, whenever we talk about uncountable nouns, we talk about the container, not the quantity itself, not the uh, noun itself. Okay, we cannot give, we cannot say a uh, milk. We can say, give me a bottle of milk, a liter of milk, a glass of milk. Do you understand? Okay, the next row is a pair of socks, two pair of socks, three pairs of socks. You see, we can count it no matter how, how much it is, how, how many it is. And if I talk about salt, it's uncountable. So what, what we use, we say some salt, a bit of salt, okay? So the things like this, salt, sugar, flour, these are uncountable. Are you getting it? All right. So countable nouns here is a picture of an island. So picture is countable. 
even we can count the trees, but here is water, which is uncountable. One donut, it's countable. Olives, yummy, yummy olives, countable. But what when I talk about grass, it's uncountable. Again, a ball of soup. Soup is uncountable, okay? A ball of cereal. Cereal is uncountable. Now you understand the difference? Okay, so it's a time of an activity. Okay, I'm, I'm going to find out how many of you know the countable and uncountable concept. All right, so what you are going to do, teacher will divide the board into two halves and the class into two teams. One, tell one half of the class that they have to write countable nouns and on their side of the board and the other that they have to write uncountable nouns on their side of the board. So one will write countable, the other will write uncountable nouns. And teacher will allocate five minutes for this activity. She will set an alarm and students at the student who is at the front of the line will take the marker and write a noun in their category. Then he or she passes the marker to the student behind him or her and goes to join the line at the end. This continues until the alarm rings and the team with most correct words, okay? Not only words, the correct words of their category wins, right? So this is how you are going to do it. An alarm is set, the team is divided into two halves, they are standing in line, they'll keep coming and keep writing. Let's see who wins. Pause the video and enjoy this beautiful activity. Yes, my dear children, very good, good job. So you have written many countable and uncountable nouns on board. So let's see what does your book say about it. All of you settle down and open your book on page number 25. Countable nouns. Nouns that can be counted as one, two, three, etc. are called countable nouns. For example, one book, two books. One hen, three hens. So these are countable nouns. And nouns that cannot be counted as one, two, three, etc. are called uncountable nouns. For example, water, milk, juice, meat, sugar, rice, oil, etc. And we say enough water, some meat, much honey, etc. All right. So here is an activity in your book. What you are supposed to do, Mariam has all the ingredients for baking a pizza. Look at the given picture. Now draw two columns in your notebook and separate the countable and uncountable nouns from the ingredients. So you will make two columns. I have tried to circle many of the uh, ingredients. You may find more. So whatever is countable, you think it's countable, write it in countable column. And what is not countable, write it in uncountable column. So pause the video and do this activity in your notebook. Yes, my dear children, are you done with it? Good job. It was easy for you, right? Okay, so I'm giving you another concept that is punctuation. We use an apostrophe to show possession of someone or something. This we already we know. Rabia's cat. So you know I have taught you when I say Rabia's cat, this apostrophe S is showing this cat belongs to Rabia. Rabia is the owner of this cat. Likewise, so there is house, dogs, tail, etc. But this apostrophe is also used for contraction. How do we use it? The apostrophe is also used in writing contraction. Contraction means to write in short form, to make a shorter form. Contraction is the shorter form of the word from which one or more letters have been removed. So what do we do? We remove one or more letters from word and we put an apostrophe over there. How do we do it? You see, I will. Now this is I and will. These are two words. So I will omit this W and I will put, put a, a parts of E and it is the same term, but in shorter form contraction, it is I'll. Cannot, can't. There are many more. Let's see. 
on clock or clock. You know, the way we say seven o'clock. So this o'clock is in fact on clock. We remove this n and we put a apostrophe, it becomes o'clock. I am, so we remove this a, put a apostrophe, it becomes I'm, we are, so we remove this a and we, it becomes we are. You are your, they are their, it is its, she is she's, he is his, that is that's. I have I've, now here I have removed these two letters H and A and I have put a part of it becomes I've, it is same. The expression is same, only it's the shorter form of I have. We have we, we and you have do not, did not and there are many more, okay. So, we'll gradually keep on learning. So, this is how we use an apostrophe in contraction. We omit one letter or more than one and just put an apostrophe to make the same word in a shorter form. You understand? All right. So, whatever we have just learned, we, we are going to practice it from your book on page number 25. What's here? Read the given paragraph and write contraction for the underlined word. So, here are the words underlined for you. You are going to write it in shorter form. So, pause the video and do this activity in your notebook. Yes, my dear students, are you done with it? Good job. So, you have to practice it. You can use it in your routine writing as well. So, I am giving you a homework. Go to the market with your elders and observe the food items that are countable and uncountable. So, write 10 from the each category in your notebook. So, 10 countable and 10 uncountable food items is your homework. And I'm giving you worksheet. There are two worksheets, my dear fellow teachers. These worksheets, lesson plan, PowerPoint presentation links are given. You may click it, download it, print the worksheets and kindly give the pr printed worksheets to students for practice. And students, what you are supposed to do, here is a word bank. You have to separate the countable uncountable nouns. Again, you have to complete these sentences and match them with your relevant countable or uncountable nouns. And here is a practice for contraction. You have to complete it and match it with the relevant column. Like from here, what is the full form and what is the contraction form, okay? So, in this way, we have learned the concept of countable and uncountable nouns. We used some countable and uncountable nouns from initiate and extended environment and we learnt and practiced use of apostrophe in contraction. So, in this way, we achieved our today's SLO to identify countable and uncountable nouns and use some of nouns from immediate and extended environment as countable and uncountable nouns. Recognize and use only the apostrophe with contraction, rest full stop and um, hyphen we will practice later. So, this in this way we achieved our SLOs. Are we done with it? Yes. That is it for today. Tomorrow I will come again with a very interesting lesson. Till the time, keep practicing, keep learning, take very good care of yourself and the people around you. Thank you and Allah Hafiz.